In this video I'm going to show you how to quantize a live drum kit to the grid in Cakewalk using the Audio Snap palette. We're going to go through two methods. The first method uses time stretching and the second method doesn't use any time stretching. This is an offshoot to another video which uses the, the manual tab to transient method. I still prefer that method but thankfully the Cakewalk transient detection system has got a lot better in the previous few updates and the stretch algorithms sound a lot better too so you've got a few options when it comes to quantizing a live drum kit so before we go any further i'll just play what we're going to be quantizing we've got a kick a snare overheads a floor tom and three room channels So yeah, it's already quite a tight performance, but we can definitely tighten up a little bit. So first of all, this is a personal preference, it's up to you how you set it up, but I would advise that you set up some keyboard shortcuts if you're going to do this a lot. So just go to the preferences menu, and you want to go to keyboard shortcuts down the left bottom here. If you can't see it, you just need to tick advanced. Just make sure that's checked and it will pop up. And in the search box, just search for audio snap. And I've got this set up a few different ways. So to view the audio snap palette, that's set to Alt-A. To insert a marker, that's set to Alt-E. To go to the next transient marker, that's Alt-Q. And to go to the previous transient marker, it's Alt-W. This just means that all the shortcuts I use for editing drums are in the same sort of space on the keyboard. So with the, the time stretch method, the first thing you want to do is get rid of everything aside from the kick and snare. Like before, I'm only going to quantize from the kick and snare. I'm just going to leave the rest of the tracks. So just get rid of them, make the kick and snare bigger, and I tend to get rid of the, the track labels as well. I just like having the waveforms nice and big. In fact, I forgot to do one thing before we do that. So select the kick and snare, hold control, and hit audio transients down the left here. That's going to bring up all these white lines, and these white lines signify the transient hits on each track. Next, I'm going to hit Alt-A, to bring up the audio snap palette and this threshold lever controls what transients are being picked up. If you set it too low it'll, it'll pick up bleed from other shells, you set it too high it won't pick up enough. I tend to find 50, 60 is a good, a good starting point. The stretch methods here, online means real time and offline means when you bounce. I'm using Elastic Efficient and Elastic Pro. The Elastic algorithms sound the best to me, but have a play around and try some other ones and see what you think sounds best. Threshold about 60. And now we can go through the hits to make sure everything's been picked up right. So just using the shortcuts that we've set up. I'm just going to go through these markers and make sure they're not shaving anything off. And you'll be able to see how much more accurate the, the detection is now since the last update. So it's just going to pick up a snare down here and the kicks at the top. Make sure your, your resolutions are nice and big for this, it makes it a lot easier. I tend to find that the kicks are perfect pretty much all the time now. The snares can still be a bit dodgy in places, normally a bit late if anything, but these all seem pretty good. One thing to watch when you're, you're quantizing drums is if you have a beat where the kick and snare are supposed to play at the exact same time, you sort of have to pick a dominant shell for that part. If you try and put them both on the grid, subsequent snares or kicks are going to drift out of time and it's just a bit of a nightmare and it just sounds a bit strange. So yeah, if you've got a kick and snare supposed to be on the exact same beat, 
just prioritise the kick or the snare. Don't mark them both, just mark one of them. This is a good example here. This sort of snare roll. The kick and the snare are supposed to be on the exact same beat. I'm just going to get rid of all the snare rolls. How you do that is either use the, the shortcut here that I've got set up or just right click the marker and hit disable. And while we're here, if you want to add in a marker, you can use the shortcut. So select it and I've got that set up to Alt E, which just puts one in. But an easier way is to just hold Alt until the pencil tool comes up and just hit the top of the transient. But we're not going to be using this one, so we'll just get rid of it. There's another one, get rid of that too, because we're going to prioritise the kit. And I'm just going to get rid of all of these actually. I don't tend to quantize fills or rolls unless they're really bad. And normally if they're that bad, you're better just trying to comp a bit differently or retrack if you're able to. This is bleed being picked up from the snare, just get rid of that. And the last hit here is a flam. And with flams, because the hits are so close together, I would advise only choosing the first transient. Now we've got the, the markers set up as we want them. You might have to go in and rejig a lot more than I had to there. I'm just pretty lucky with this track that they're being detected pretty accurately. So bring in the other tracks again. And what you want to do now is highlight all of them. I've just realised I've spelt this rumid. We just will leave it as that for now. Um, once again, bring up the audio transients. Bring up the palette. And we're just going to get rid of absolutely all of them. We only want the kick and the snare mark. If you quantize from the overheads, it will snap them bang on in time. And it just sounds a bit thin and hollow because you're getting rid of the natural delays um, in the recording. And those delays sort of give you depth with all those buzzwords that you're probably fed up of hearing. But yeah, just kick and snare, um, nothing else. So once you've got this sorted, just hit Control A and then right click in any body clip and hit Merge and Lock Markers. This copies all of the, the kick and snare markers across every single clip. And now we can stretch these to the grid. So hit Q, that's another shortcut. I'm not sure if it's default, but I've got it set up to Q. Brings up the Quantize box. Under Change here, you want to hit Audio Snap Beats. That's the setting for stretching. The options just leave as default and 16s is going to be fine for this. Just hit OK. And you'll see that some of the transients have changed colour. They've changed from red to blue. That just signifies where things have been stretched. So we'll just play through this and we'll see how it sounds. Just listen for any artifacts such as like dodgy phasing noises and symbols and hi-hats sounding a bit sort of delayed and just generally a bit weird. That's kind of what can happen if you, you stretch too aggressively. But like I said, the algorithms are a lot better now. That does sound alright, but I do think the kick sounds a bit weird, maybe a bit phasey, and the hats sound a bit off as well. The general transient response isn't as good. Um, I tend to stretch only when I need to. I would use the other method, but I know a lot of people will like this because it's a bit quicker, and you, you could argue that no one can hear the weird noises that I'm talking about. But yeah, that's how you time stretch drums in the cakewalk. What we'll do now is I'll play a comparison between unquantized and time stretched.
with the second method that uses the audio snap palette to split every single clip in one go, you do the exact same thing as we did in the stretch method. You go through every kick and snare, make sure they're all marked correctly. Obviously I did it for the, the previous method, so I've just went back a few steps. And everything is exactly the same up until the last point. So highlight everything once you've got your markers in. Right click again, hit merge and lock markers. Again, all the markers have been copied across the clips. Bring back the audio snap palette. And it's this button you want to hit. Audio snap split beats into clips. That's just going to split absolutely every clip at the transient marker, so we'll just hit that. Everything has been split into tiny chunks and they've put in fades for us. Highlight everything, right click any clip header, go to clip lock and unlock the position. Once again, hit Q. In this part, we want to go for audio clip start times. Resolution we know works as 16ths. Options default, and that's cool. Just hit OK. A lot of these clips have sort of moved slightly. We'll just play through this and see how it sounds. That sounds good to me. I tend to think that sounds better than the time stretched method. Everything sounds a bit more natural. And I think the general transient response sounds a lot better. Of course though, with the time stretched method, that was quite an extreme example. It's more than good enough for just fixing parts here and there. All you need to do now is, and I should have mentioned this in the first method, is when you've finished quantizing, just select everything and just bounce them down. I'll play a comparison between the time stretched drums and these drums that use the sort of dynamic split method. Let me know in the comments what you think sounds better. I tend to favour the split method because it ensures phase coherency and it's just doing the least amount of damage to the signal. Like I said before, a lot of the artifacts that come with stretching, a lot of people won't be able to hear them, but it's totally up to you. You just have a, have a mess about and see what works the best for you. And finally, remember you don't have to quantize every drum performance or every drum hit. Sometimes you only have to do some things. This is just an extreme example about what's possible. 